With the release of Kirby Star Allies around the corner, I just thought I'd like to rank my favorite traditional Kirby games in the franchise, at the very least with the top 5. Being the hardcore Kirby fan that I am, I did manage to at least beat the main campaigns for all of the main Kirby games. Also, this list will be limited to the main games only, no spin-offs. This is Pan Bam Richard presenting to you my top 5 Kirby games. Number 5. Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards A lot of people who aren't hardcore Kirby fans really like this title. I think it's good. Not bad, and not the best, but it deserves to be on this list. The game encouraged you to explore the different power-up combinations that it has to provide, similarly to how the animal friends were handled in previous titles. But they got rid of those animals altogether for a more conventional combination system, and it's what most fans of this game enjoyed. While the possibilities and combinations felt unique and endless, their functions are still a little limited compared to titles like Superstar or the most recent Kirby games. Regardless, it was still a solid adventure from beginning to end, and it's a fun game to 100% every now and then. Number 4. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror What the remake in Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland established, Flagship and HAL took Kirby into this very ambitious title in 2004. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror takes this Metroidvania approach, which I can understand traditional Kirby fans not enjoying because it doesn't follow the formula. To be honest, when I played this game in 2004, I didn't have any exposure to the Metroid franchise, but enjoyed every bit of this adventure. The exploration and the collectibles that you encounter throughout the game really made this feel like a game with a lot of content. And while the aesthetics of the game are familiar to other games in the past, the soundtrack that accompanied these stages made them all memorable and unique. Such highlights include Peppermint Palace and Candy Constellation. To further highlight this ambition, the game even included a solid multiplayer function. Owners of the game can connect to three other players with link cables and go through the main campaign of the game together. What makes this different from other Kirby games such as Kirby's Return to Dreamland is that all four Kirby's can go on their own little adventures and if one of them needs help, they can call the other players to go to their aid essentially. Honestly. It was a game that took a lot of risk, but I felt that the demands at the time were a bit high up there, especially with regards to the equipment required and the amount of systems required and so on and so forth. With the Metroidvania approach and the whole multiplayer concept, I would personally love to see this formula come back in a future Kirby game. Number 3. Kirby's Return to Dreamland. After 11 years since Kirby 64, we got this game. HAL would constantly tease us with different images and footage for the next traditional Kirby game on the consoles, and they end up skipping the GameCube entirely. Even still, when this game came out, it was in 2011, a year before the Wii U came out. Honestly though, the wait was worth it. They used the foundation of Kirby Superstar, which was extended in its remake, and brought back what that game pushed forward with the series, command lists and damage calculation. You know how I mentioned in the Crystal Shards that while the possibilities felt endless in combinations, the result was essentially the same? That is not in this game. Instead of each power-up doing the whole one-shot one-kill output with their function, this game had the whole damage calculation down pat. Say for example when you fire a feather from a wing, of course that's not going to do as much damage to an enemy compared to a sword. That's what makes copy abilities all the more interesting, especially when players take on one particular power-up for boss rushes, not only realizing their weaknesses, but accentuating their strengths. That's what this game brought back to the series, and it now became the standard again for future Kirby games to follow. Shinya Kumazaki along with the rest of the team really did a great job with this title after the 11 year wait. Number 2. Kirby Planet Robobot Falling forward from what was established in Kirby Return to Dreamland is this title. Why did I choose this over Triple Deluxe? Two things. One, no gyroscope sections. Besides this one point in the extra stages of Robobot, every other stage ditched that mechanic altogether and just focused on platforming along with Kirby's abilities. I can't tell you how many times I've grown whenever I ran into a gyroscope section in Triple Deluxe. I get it, Nintendo loves pushing their gimmicks but would it hurt them to have the option to turn it off? And number 2, the Hypernova power-up, which was essentially an ultra ability callback from Return to Dreamland. I didn't mention this in the Return to Dreamland part of this video, but when the super abilities came in, I kind of forgave it back then in 2011 because it was just the first Kirby game in the 11 years, I was gonna accept whatever risk they were trying to take. And it was okay, but it didn't really add much at the end of the day. But then when they brought it back to Triple Deluxe through the Hypernova power-up, I started to feel more as to how that feature essentially broke the pace of the game. Whereas with the Robobot armor, you were still essentially Kirby, but the armor acted more as an extension of its abilities and did not break the pace at all, in my opinion. 
Honestly, I'm just nitpicking, but I have to nitpick in order to rank these games, and I thought that Robobot was the better experience of the two, and the most solid of the modern era of Kirby games to date. Bosses may have felt a bit repetitive, but during my playthrough, it didn't detract from the experience. Also, it has the most brutal true arena of the entire franchise, and I will never forget the strenuous experiences I had. That aside, it's still a very solid Kirby single-player experience. Number 1. Kirby Superstar Ultra For those who know me, it should go without saying that Kirby Superstar is my favorite game of all time. Nostalgia plus good game design was what made me come back to this game so many times, and I still do to this day. And when they announced a remake of this game, I was on board with this since day one, and when I got it, I was absolutely amazed by everything they did to refine this already perfect game in my opinion. They addressed the issue with ability removal from the original game by bringing back the removal button from Kirby's Adventure, they redone a lot of the sprites to reflect the GBA style, and the callbacks within the series that you see nowadays initially started with this game. It all started when they brought back Kabula in the Revenge of the King mode, and she didn't make an appearance since Kirby's Dream Land, the very first game of the franchise, and since then she's made even more appearances. Oh yeah, and the extra modes like Meta Nightmare Ultra, which was a callback to Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland Meta Nightmare mode, as well with the original True Arena alongside Helper to Hero. The remake has so much love and care for those who love the original Superstar, and just for Kirby fans in general. As you can tell, I can't stop gushing about this game, so you can clearly see why this is my number one Kirby game of all time. <laughs> 